God Almighty. The Israelites have rejected your covenant, broken down your altars, put your prophets to death with a sword. I am the only one left, and now they are trying to kill me too. The Lord said to him, Go back the way you came. Go to the desert of Damascus. When you get there, anoint Hazel king, and anoint Yehu, the son of Nimshi, king over Israel, and anoint Elijah, son of Saphat, from Abel, Manoah, to succeed you as the prophet. Yehu will put you to death. Any who escape the sword of Hazel and Elijah will put to death any who escape the sword of Yehu. Yet I reserve 7,000 in Israel, all whose knees have not bowed down to Baal, and all whose mouths have not kissed him. The second lesson today comes from Romans chapter 11, verses 10, or Romans 10, verses 5 through 15, and that is found on page 1760 in your Pew Bible. Moses describes in this way the righteousness that is by the law. The man who does not have these things will live by them. But the righteousness that is by faith says, Do not say in your heart, Who will ascend into heaven? That is, to bring Christ down. Or, Who will descend to the deep? That is, to bring Christ up from the dead. But what does it say? The word is near you. It is in your mouth. It is in your heart. That is the word of the faith that we are proclaiming, that if you confess with your mouth, Jesus is Lord, and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For it is with your heart that you believe and are justified, and it is with your mouth that you confess and are saved. As the scripture says, anyone who puts trust in him will never be put to shame. For there is no difference between Jew and Gentile. The same Lord is Lord of all and richly blesses all who call on him. For everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. How then can they call on the one who they have not believed in? And how can they believe in the one of whom they have not heard? And how can they hear without someone preaching to them? And how can they preach unless they are sent? As it is written, How beautiful are the feet of those who bring good news. The word of the Lord. The Holy Gospel this morning comes to us from Matthew chapter 14. Glory to you, O Lord. Immediately, Jesus made the disciples get into the boat and go to the, uh, ahead of him to the other side while he dismissed the crowd. 
And after he had dismissed them, he went up to the mountainside by himself to pray. And when evening came, he was there alone. The boat was already in a considerable distance from land, buffeted by the waves because of the wind was against it. And during the fourth watch of the night, Jesus went out to them, walking on the lake. And when the disciples saw him walking on the lake, they were terrified. It's a ghost, they said, and cried out in fear. But Jesus immediately said to them, Take courage, it is I. Do not be afraid. Lord, if it is you, Peter replied, tell, tell me to come to you on the water. Come, Jesus said. Then Peter got down out of the boat, walked on the water, and came toward Jesus. But when he saw the wind, he was afraid and began to, beginning to sink, cried out, Lord, save me. And immediately Jesus reached out his hand and caught him. You of little faith, he said, why did you doubt? And when they climbed into the boat, the wind died down. Then those who were in the boat worshipped him, saying, truly, you are the Son of God. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. And please be seated. Fear. Fear. It's easy for us to get lost in our emotions of fear, to allow ourselves to be overcome with fear, to, to be paralyzed by it, especially in times of uncertainty. The disciples experienced this fear as they were in their boat being tossed around by the wind and the waves and then they saw what they thought was a ghost walking across the water towards them. Fear. Now we've all endured fear from time to time in our lives, haven't we? Some, some of us are afraid of spiders and snakes. Some of us are afraid even today of bats flying down from the belfry, right? <laughs> right here in the sanctuary, swooping down in the middle of church. Or maybe you thought, like I did when I was in the younger years, that the, the boogeyman lived in the dark crevices and the dark corners of our old farmhouse. And maybe some of you can relate. When I was a little kid, I would hit the switch, the light switch at the bottom of the stairs, run up the stairs, pass to those the hallway, hit that light, go back to the stair light, hit that one off, then run through the hallway to my room, hit that light, then run back to the hallway, hit that one off, and then go to my room and shut the door. Now, mind you, the hallway was about this long. <laughs> but I was sure that he was waiting for me in that corner. Right around the corner in the hallway, there's this dark spot. I was scared. Maybe, on a more serious note, maybe you have been fearful. Maybe you've experienced fear when you discovered you or a loved one had cancer. Maybe you came home one day and the house was empty and you realized that your spouse was not coming home. And what you thought was a lifelong relationship ended up in a divorce. Maybe you lost a loved one or maybe someone close to you and the thought of not knowing what you would do without them in your life is frightening. Maybe you found out that you lost your job and can't fathom how you're going to support your family without a paycheck. Or maybe you're entering into retirement. And this deep question of what am I supposed to do now? What is my purpose in life now keeps creeping back into your heart. Because much of what has been given you, given you purpose before this time in your life now has changed. Your work life is gone. And for many this week, 
Fear has struck through thoughts and threats. Countries and nations can't find diplomatic ways to get along with one another. And yet for others, the last couple of days as well, the fear of violence breaking out. The fear of what is our country coming to when we can't accept one another for who we are. And racism and bigotry is running rampant and among some. And hate and violence gets the best of us. Fear. Fear. For some of us, it's enough to turn our heads and deeply ponder our life as followers of Jesus and where our hope comes from in all of this. So how do we respond to feelings of fear? We sometimes talk about being scared stiff and paralyzed with fear, right? You've heard those before, you've experienced those before, but, but we also know that a lot of times we see people reacting to fear by running like crazy. Fear, this, this, this fear, flight, this flight in fear. And it doesn't matter where we run to or what we try next. When we get scared, we feel like we just have to keep moving. A psychologist once wrote, humans are the strangest of all of God's creatures because they run fastest when they have lost their way. They run fastest when they have lost their way. And this is how we get into trouble, isn't it? By running when we are lost. This is when we tend to make our worst mistakes in our relationships, in our family, and in our work. The same could be said for, for governments or churches or other organizations. We're not convinced that God is leading us someplace and, and we totally get off the path, lose our direction, or try a shortcut. We run like scared sheep, scattering, and we get lost trying so hard to find ourselves again when we're lost. We, we even lose sight of who we truly are, who we really are, who, who we were created to be, who God created us to be. And then Jesus enters into our boat, enters into our lives when all around us the waves and winds of our lives are scaring us making us fearful for our lives and the lives of others. And Jesus enters back into our boat, and the waters turn to calm. My friends, this does not mean when Jesus enters back into our life or when we allow Jesus, maybe more so the truth of that, allow Jesus to enter back into our life, that it doesn't mean that our troubles will automatically go away or that in our lives or that, that things will be nice and smooth sailing and the waters will always be calm when we follow Jesus. But what Jesus does is calm our fears that reside deep inside of our souls in the middle of the storm, in the middle of time and certainty, in the middle of threats of war and hatred and violence. In recent weeks, there have been a handful of our community who have experienced the fear of uncertainty in the days leading up to surgery that they're having, that fear of the unknown, it can be unnerving. And I spent some time in, in the days, pri days prior with a couple of our folks from Nordland heading into surgery, and we sat together, and we prayed together, and we breathed together, breathing out all of our fears and anxieties of what was ahead and breathing in peace and calm and grounding. Breathing in centeredness, 
reminding ourselves that we are beloved children of God and that God does not leave our side. And so, my friends, in in a time such as this, when we feel the anxiety and fear and chaos that seems to be at times growing around us, we look to Jesus for peace. And one of the ways we can do this is through centering prayer, through centering, centered breathing. And you, remay, you may remember a few weeks ago, we spent a little time in worship actually breathing deeply, centering ourselves, grounding ourselves in the truth that we are beloved children of God. And so we're going to do this again giving us, once again, a a tool to use in times like these and, and a reminder in the midst of all the fears and uncertainty that is swirling around us, we look together to the words of Jesus who reminds us, do not be afraid. I am with you. It is I. I am here with you. So I invite you right now to find that space where you're sitting, some grounding with your feet on the floor. You might have to wiggle around, get the wiggles out a little bit, and find a centering space for you to calm yourself and to be. And I'm going to lead you through this, this prayer exercise, this centering breathing, the centering prayer. So first of all, sit comfortably and shut your eyes. Breathe in slowly. This might be difficult for some of us. It's difficult for me. Breathe slowly and deeply. And exhale. Inhale and ref- feel the refreshment through your body. And now in the stillness, be aware of the beating of your heart. The heart on which life depends. The God in which we live and move and have our being. Pay attention to your life and how it is connected with God, with others, your neighbors, family, and friends. And as we continue to breathe, I'm going to guide you through this practice of breathing, and we're going to use a prayer that is often attributed to St. Francis of Assisi as a way of entering into this time of calm and peace. And while we're doing this, keep focusing on your breath. Lord, make me an instrument of your peace. Where there is hatred, let me sow love. Where there is injury, pardon. Where there is doubt, faith. Where there is despair, hope. Where there is darkness, light. Where there is sadness, joy. O Divine Master, grant that I may not so much seek to be consoled as to console, to be heard, to be understood as to understand, to be loved as to love. For it is in giving that we receive, and it is pardoning that we are pardoned, and it is in dying that we are born to eternal life. Lord, make me an instrument of your peace. It's a reminder that I don't have to be or do anything special. Just be willing to open my heart to be a channel for peace. So that peace can flow through me without me getting in the way. Where there is hatred, let me sow love. Instead of responding to anger and hatred with more of the same, help me demonstrate love 
and everything I do and say. Where there is injury, pardon. I release grudges and resentments. I offer forgiveness to others. And through offering forgiveness, I experience freedom for myself and others. Where there is doubt, faith. Faith is not a religion. Faith is trusting that I am a beloved child of God. Where there is despair, hope. Instead of commiserating with someone who is trapped in fear, I offer words and actions of hope. Where there is darkness, light. I shine a light in the world to dispel the darkness of ignorance. And where there is sadness, joy. I radiate joy wherever I go. O Divine Master, grant that I may not so much seek to be consoled as to console. When I bring comfort to others, the action warms my own soul. To understand, under, to be understood as to understand, rather than expecting others to understand me, I become an attentive listener. To be loved as to love. When I seek love from someone, I actually push it away with neediness. But when I get in harmony with love, when love becomes a part of who I am, then love comes to me naturally. For it is in giving that we receive. When we send out, when we give to others, we receive and return in ways we wouldn't expect. It is in pardoning that we are pardoned. When I forgive others for their mistakes, it also heals my own mistakes. And it's in dying that we are born to eternal life. When we get out from underneath our own worries and fears, we experience the joy of life in the here and now and into life eternal. Breathe in deeply. Love and hope and exhale fear and anxiety. Slowly take a notice of your hands and your feet and slowly come back to the here and now. Slowly opening your eyes. My friends, in the midst of what we don't know, in the midst of fear and uncertainty of our world, in the midst of what we have no control over, let's not lose hope because there is Jesus. Let's take hope in the light and the hope and the peace of Jesus and walk together on this journey. May we be instruments of Jesus' peace, hope, and love and offering it to the Lord, to the world, to Jesus, trusting that our precious Lord is taking us by our hand, leading us on, and helping us stand. Amen. Amen. Continue with our hymn, When Peace Like a River, which is in your green hymnal number 346 or up on the screen. When Peace Like a River.
Please stand as you are able as we confess our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. Together. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. And please be seated as we receive our offering at this time.
Generous, compassionate God, we gather before you to pray for the church, the world, and all those in need. O oh God, our ruler, continue to send out your church on earth to be light and salt to the world. Keep giving us the heart to do your work. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. O oh God, our creator, you quiet the seas and silence the wind. Restore your creation to perfection and beauty you spoke into being. May we be co-creators in bringing about healing to your earth. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. O God, our Redeemer, in this time of fear and anxiety and hate, may we be your hope and love. Inspire leaders and inspire us to be willing to stand up against injustice so that your justice and love thrives throughout your world. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. O God, our sustainer, comfort those who are lonely, fearful, or burdened by doubt. Give meaningful work to those who seek employment. Walk with those who are grieving or ill. And this morning we especially pray for Bruce, Lucille, Virgil, and those we name in our hearts at this time. O oh God, give them calm where they need it. Bring them healing and wholeness. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. O oh God, our encourager, empower this congregation to boldly proclaim and live out your love to all who long to hear a word of hope and kindness. Equip us to use our hands, our feet, our voices and our minds to share the bounty you have given us. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Into your hands we place all our prayers, spoken and unspoken, trusting in the mercy of Christ Jesus. Amen. Our Father, Now may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face shine on you with grace and mercy. May the Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let's give another round of applause and thanks to the Hagans family for sharing with us. Thank you for enriching our worship today. Thank you. Let's uh, continue with our closing hymn, which is in your blue hymnal, My Life Flows Out On in Endless Song, 781.
Go in peace and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. <laughs>